Good morning, library friends. Are you ready to go on a picnic with me? I came equipped. I brought a basket. It's got some fun food that we're going to do a song with a little bit later. And we're going to have a story all about a picnic that a rabbit and a mouse take together. But we're going to start off this morning with a fun new flannel rhyme. It's based off the book Jamberry by Bruce Dagan, which I would have brought with me and shared with you, but it's checked out, so I can't. So instead, we're going to make a fun action song with berries, because this is a great time of year for berries. The blueberries and blackberries are just starting to ripen and be ready. The strawberry season is probably pretty much over with, but cherries are turning ripe. Everything is ripening up deliciously for this time of year. So we are going to go on a berry hunt first off. And we are going to go under the bridge and over the dam. And we are going to be looking for berries, berries for jam. We're shading our eyes because the sun is so bright out. We don't want to miss a sweet, juicy berry. Are you ready? Let's try it. Under the bridge and over the dam, looking for berries, berries for jam. Now we're going to count. One berry, two berry, pick me a blueberry. We'll see if we can fill that canoe up with berries. Jamberry the story is about a boy and a bear on the hunt for berries. So I think this will be perfect. All right, we've got one berry. Let's see if we can add some more. We're going to go under the bridge and over the dam, looking for berries, berries for jam. Three berry, four berry, pick me a strawberry. Mmm, a ripe red delicious strawberry. So we've got blueberry and strawberry. What could we add next? Mmm, I think you might be right. I think it might be time for a blackberry. And I think we're up to five and six that we're going to count in this verse. But first we go under the bridge and over the dam, looking for berries, berries for jam. Five berries, six berry, pick me a blackberry. Mmm, juicy and warm from the sun. That looks delicious. Let's keep going. Let's add another kind of berry. Mmm, this one is a ripe red berry that grows on a tree. Yep, yep, we're gonna do cherry next. Okay, under the bridge and over the dam, looking for berries, berries for jam. Seven berry, eight berry, pick me a ripe cherry. Here we go. We are just about out of room. I think we have room for one more kind of berry, and that'll put us all the way up to ten with our counting. So we'll go under the bridge and over the dam, looking for berries. Berries for jam. Nine berry, ten berry, pick me a raspberry. Mm, that pretty deep pink color. This all looks delicious and sweet. All right, I think we're going to go under the bridge and over the dam one more time and sing We Picked Berries, Berries for Jam. Here we go. Under the bridge and over the dam, 
we picked berries, berries for jam. All right. Give yourselves a hand for all that counting and noticing colors and the different shapes. Like the strawberry is kind of almost heart shaped and the blueberry is pretty close to perfectly round with those little prongs where it attaches to the uh, shrub. And the blackberry and raspberry are kind of lumpy bumpy shaped berries. And there's that round ripe red cherry. The story I brought to share with you today that has a picnic in it is one that also has just very, very few words in it. It's called Good News, Bad News. There's Bunny and Mouse. And Bunny always sees the good side of things. He says good news to nearly everything. Mouse, on the other hand, is not so sure about whether Bunny's news is good news or bad news. This is by Jeff Mack. He did both the words, which like I said, there aren't very many words in it, and the pictures. And we are reading this courtesy of Chronicle Books. Thanks for letting us share. Oh my. The end papers here give us a little bit of clue about all the different things we're going to see in this story. Oh my, we're going to see a bear. Would you like to see a bear while you are on a picnic? I would not. Ooh, and up here it looks like it's raining. Hmm, and an apple with a worm in it and a swarm of bees. Let's find out if all of that happens. Good News, Bad News by Jeff Mack. Here comes Bunny with the picnic basket. Oh, and look, leaving behind a trail of fruit. Mouse is sitting here looking kind of cranky in his hole, isn't he? Hmm. Bunny says, good news. He brought the picnic basket. Oh, Mouse says, no, bad news. The raindrops are coming down. This is not a good time for a picnic, apparently. But Bunny has come prepared. Good news. He brought an umbrella. Bad news. Oh. The wind is so strong, it picked that umbrella and mouse up and carried them away. Oh my goodness, right into the tree, which is where Bunny finds them and says, good news. Oh, poor mouse fell right down out of that tree. He doesn't think there's any good news. But Bunny says, oh, and it's even worse news here. The apples in that tree fall down and bonk, mouse right on top of his head. Bad news. Oh, but good news. Now they don't have to climb the tree to pick those apples. Mmm, that one looks shiny and delicious. And mouse has maybe changed his mind. He's reaching out for it. He takes a bite and, oh no, look who's in that apple. It's Worm. And Worm is sticking his tongue out at Mouse. Mmm, I got here first. He's a sassy worm, isn't he? Ugh, Mouse says, Bleh. bad news. Oh, but Bunny is still prepared. What does he have? Mmm, yes, good news. Chocolate cake with pink frosting on it. Maybe it's raspberry frosting, like our berries that we had in the rhyme earlier. Mmm, that looks delicious. 
Mouse thinks so too. Look, he tosses away that apple and the worm goes flying out of it. He wants chocolate cake instead. But just as he's about to take a bite, bad news, there's a bee. Ooh, that bee is baring his teeth at the mouse. He says, don't you bite me. Good news, Bunny has a fly swatter. He's gonna get that bee. Do you think that's a good idea? Is this gonna end well? Of course it's not. He splats the cake and that frosting goes everywhere, all over Mouse. So sticky. And he didn't even get the bee. Off goes the bee. Mmm. And Bunny says, good news. We can just lick the frosting off of ourselves. But, look carefully. I see hidden up here in the tree, a beehive. And coming out of it are lots of very mad bees. Bad news, says Mouse. Oh. But Bunny says, oh, good news. Here is a convenient cave. Do you think it's going to be convenient? I don't know. There's always been opposites, good news and bad news so far in this story. Let's see what the bad news is. There it is. The bad news is there's a bear and he's after them. He is not happy to have his cave invaded by bees and bunnies and mice. Oh, good news. There's a convenient flagpole for them to climb up. They should be safe from bear there until it gets struck by lightning. Oh no. I think everybody gets a little bit of a sizzle there. Oh my. But Bunny says, it's okay, good news. That bear was frightened off by getting a little singed. Let's see what Mouse has to say. Oh, he is fed up. He said, he's having a little tantrum, isn't he? He says, bad, 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 bad news. He did not like being struck by lightning. And can you blame him? No. Oh, poor Bunny is feeling bad and sad. Mouse just hollered at him really loudly. Oh, this whole plan of Bunny's has just gone awry, hasn't it? Oh, I think he's gonna cry. Yes. Oh, bad news. Bunny feels bad. But then the sun comes out. I think Mouse has an idea. Where's he going? Let's find out. He's brought the picnic basket. So after all that, they can still have their picnic. And he says, good news? Oh, very good news, says Bunny. They're back to being friends after going through all of that good and bad news together. And there's still food in the picnic basket. The end.
was a pretty exciting picnic, wasn't it? I don't know if I would like to have a picnic that exciting with bears and bees and frosting all over me. I don't like being sticky. I think I would like to skip that part. All right, friends, I think we have just enough time to do a very, very silly picnic song. So I brought my picnic basket and it's got everything we need in it to make this goofy song. So I'm gonna just set that right here. I'm gonna reach in there and see what kind of ingredients this song has in it. It's got an orange. All right, we are gonna make this orange and then we are gonna peel it and squeeze it. So our song goes like this. You do the actions with me, okay? We are gonna form the orange, form, form the orange, form the orange, form, form the orange. And now we're gonna peel the orange, peel the orange, peel, peel the orange, peel the orange, peel, peel the orange. And now we are gonna squeeze the orange, squeeze, squeeze the orange, squeeze the orange, squeeze, squeeze the orange. Now we've got a lovely glass of delicious orange juice for our picnic. That's a great place to start. Let's see, what else might be in my picnic basket here? Hmm, this one is a little strange. It's a potato. Have you ever taken a potato on a picnic before? Me neither, but let's try it. We are going to form the potato, form, form the potato, form the potato, form, form the potato. And now we are going to peel the potato, peel, peel the potato, peel the potato, peel, peel the potato, and mash the potato, mash, mash the potato, mash the potato, mash, mash the potato. This is kind of a strange picnic, don't you think? Orange juice and mashed potatoes. I would never think to eat those two things together. Let's see what else is in here. A ripe red tomato. All right, let's try and make a tomato. Here we go. We're gonna do a small tomato. Form the tomato, form, form the tomato, form, the tomato, form, form the tomato. Peel the tomato, peel, peel the tomato. Peel the tomato, peel, peel the tomato. And now we are gonna the ketchup, the ketchup, the ketchup, the ketchup. Hmm, are we putting ketchup on our mashed potatoes? Do you do that? It might be tasty. I'm gonna have to try it. I think we've got a couple more. Oh my. Now here's one. I really love sweet corn. So I would be perfectly happy to have sweet corn on our picnic. All right. Let's see if we can make an ear of corn. I bet you we can. We're gonna take our arms and make them go all the way up into a point like this. Okay, here we go. We are going to form the corn. Form, form the corn. Form the corn. Form, form the corn. And now we're gonna peel all of that husk off the corn. The word for that is shuck the corn. So we are gonna shuck the corn. Shuck, shuck the corn. Shuck the corn. Shuck, shuck the corn. And now we are going to pop the corn, pop, pop the corn, pop the corn, pop, pop the corn. <laughs> oh, that one is good and silly. This is a very strange picnic. Ketchup, mashed potatoes, orange juice, popcorn. And is there anything else left in our basket here? Oh, there is, there is a banana. All right, let's make a banana together. 
we're going to do the same thing that we did with the corn, but the banana curves a little bit, so we're going to lean. Here we go. Form the banana. Form, form the banana. Form the banana. Form, form the banana. Peel the banana. Peel, peel the banana. Peel the banana. Peel, peel the banana. And now we go bananas! Go, go bananas! Go bananas! Go, go bananas! <laughs> All right. Give yourselves a big hand for helping me make the craziest picnic ever. I hope that was a good time. Maybe at home you could talk with your grown up and think about what other fruits and vegetables you could form the shapes of. Maybe it's a big round watermelon, like this, a watermelon over top of your head. And maybe you could spit the watermelon seeds out as an action. Let's see. I don't know. I'm going to let you think about that and see if you can make up some more verses for that song with your grown-up. And in the meantime, Miss Jenna and I will be thinking about next week's story time, and we will see you there. Thanks, library friends.